Following episode 3 of Pike Biology Explained, a few people have messaged me asking to do more. As an academic and lifelong angler, I've gone deep into the science behind what we see on the water. Every time you cast, there's more happening beneath the surface than what most people realise. Pressure waves, light angles, vibration signatures, predator logic. You've seen it yourself, a shadow trailing your lure, studying every movement before disappearing into the depths. Today we're breaking down exactly why pike follow but don't strike. This is Pike Biology Explained, Episode 4. Pike aren't indecisive, they're strategic. Each burst of speed drains oxygen and energy. And studies show ambush predators like pike perform strict cost-benefit calculations before committing. They track, assess, and only strike when the odds justify the expense. What looks like curiosity is actually a sensory analysis. Their lateral line reading water pressure, their eyes tracking motion and contrast. When those signals don't synchronize, the strike aborts. According to recent hydrodynamic studies, pike identify prey by its vibration fingerprint, not its color pattern. The moment your lure hits the surface, they feel its pulse long before they see it. Even a steady retrieve can fool them if that thump or roll mimics a plausible swimmer. But once the pattern becomes too perfect, too smooth or too predictable, the brain flags it as unnatural, especially if the lure tracks straight towards them. I mean, no bait fish in the wild would swim head on into a predator's mouth. Generations that did, didn't survive to pass on the genes. So the pike follows, waiting for imperfection. A pause, a drop, a stutter. That's the cue of weakness that flips analysis into attack. Biomechanics research show pike rely on precise geometry, a flank angle, a distance gap, a velocity match for a single explosive burst. When that alignment never appears, you get a long follow with no hit. Change your retrieve to force geometry. A quarter in turn, a side sweep, a short burst followed by a slack. Each movement exposes the broadside that triggers the strike window. In clear water, pike rely heavily on vision. That extended visibility gives them more time to inspect and more time to notice flaws. In stained water, they switch to the lateral line more so, judging by vibration instead of sight. The decision window shrinks and reaction replaces evaluation. That's why high contrast, bold vibration laws often outfish hyper-realistic patterns. Clarity lengthens doubt, Merck shortens it. Pike metabolism mirrors the water. In cold conditions, digestion slows. Each hunt must count. More follows, fewer hits, usually. As temperature rises, metabolism and feeding frequency increase. The same fish commits faster because energy recovery is quicker. Cold doesn't kill aggression, it just demands efficiency. Present an easy kill, not a marathon chase. In this clip, a pike follows my law for a while. Two near strikes, but then it drifts up to the lens. A near field assessment, lateral line and vision working together for a final verification. But at that point I then lift the lure out, the stimulus disappears and so does the chase. That entire decision process, detection, pursuit, confirmation and then unfortunately withdrawal because I brought my lure to the end of its retreat. And sometimes they ignore the law completely and go straight for something completely different. Like when this pike smashed my underwater camera. Why? Well, science gives us clues. Studies on pike behavior in pressured lakes show that novel or irregular stimuli can trigger investigatory or defensive strikes, even when the fish isn't feeding. The camera's low frequency vibration and lens reflection perhaps produced an unfamiliar pressure pulse. A signal the pike couldn't categorise. It reacted out of sensory conflict, not hunger. That's a reminder that pike don't just hunt. They test, they probe, and sometimes attack purely to resolve uncertainty. 
On heavily fished waters, repeated exposure to the same law patterns can cause pike to become cautious. A phenomenon backed by studies showing catch rates drop even when fish numbers stay con constant. They still follow, but they hesitate to strike. That's conditioning. And it deserves its own deep dive. And that's coming next in episode 5. When you see a follow, don't freeze. Manipulate the data they're reading. Pause hard. Sweep off the axis. Burst then stall. Change the vibration. Shift the depth. You're not tricking the fish. You're breaking its analysis loop. Every follow is feedback. It means your law communicated, just not perfectly. Adjust the rhythm, the signal, or the angle, and you're not guessing anymore. You speak in the predator's language. If you enjoyed this one, hit that subscribe button, because next time we're diving into whether pike actually learn from being caught. And here's a little field truth. If you get a follow that doesn't end in a take, change your law and go again. More times than I can count, I've watched a pike follow one law, swap it out, cast back, and bang, instant hit. Sometimes all it takes is showing them something just different enough to flip that switch. This is Pike Biology Explained, and until next time, stay hooked. I'm Stu, a British military veteran, and predator angling runs deep in my veins. It's about wild waters, the chase, and a way of life. If you enjoyed this adventure, hit subscribe and join me on the next one. This is Hooked on Predator Fishing, and until next time, stay hooked.